This is me at the bottom of a tropical sea, also here, and here as well. Obviously, I'm not currently underwater, so I'm talking about an ocean that existed roughly 500 million years ago. Now, parts of that ocean floor are scattered all over the place as church walls, front steps, foundations, gravestones, and even part of the Washington Monument. This is the life story of those stones. Good morning from me and my steering wheel. <laughs> I just stopped for coffee and a muffin on my way to Natural Bridge State Park in Northern Massachusetts. But yeah, I'm really excited. Here we go. Here I am <laughs> at the quarry. This is Natural Bridge State Park in Northern Massachusetts, and it's not only a wonderful place to see the rocks up close, but also a place to witness a snapshot of this rock's history as a building stone. The rocks you're looking at are part of the Stockbridge Formation that began forming half a billion years ago during the Cambrian period. This rock formation is present in a large part of Massachusetts as well as parts of Connecticut and New York, and it's part of an area including several marble rock formations known as the Marble Valley. Quick side note, this marble bedrock is a major part of the fertile farmland in this region. The soils that come from this bedrock are very calcareous, making it a great foundation for farming and also leads to amazing biodiversity, like at Bartholomew's Cobble near Sheffield, Massachusetts, which I made a video about a few months ago. I wanted to take you here because I heard that it was once a marble quarry, but also because of the way that the water has eroded away at the bedrock. This waterfall and gorge formed at the end of the last ice age when the glaciers melted and left behind huge amounts of rushing meltwater. This ended up forming lots of waterfalls, lakes, streams, and gorges because of the sheer volume and force of that water. This is an example of that, but also a great example of how marble is pretty weak when it comes to both physical and chemical weathering. Water not only physically wears down the softer bedrock, but acidic water and rain dissolves calcite in the marble. The Stockbridge marble started out as a bunch of remnants of living things, like corals, shells, bones, that all fell to the bottom of a shallow sea over 500 million years ago. At this time on Earth, dinosaurs or even trees hadn't existed yet, and most life was in the oceans. The land was also south of the equator, and climate was tropical. Think of something like the Bahamas today. The name of this sea was the Iapetus Ocean, and it existed between the ancient North America continent called Laurentia, and a mini-continent made up of a bunch of islands. All that stuff that piled up in layers on the floor of the continental shelf eventually compacted and turned into a sedimentary rock called limestone. Because of plate tectonics on this planet of ours, these chunks of land were slowly moving towards each other over millions of years and eventually collided about 440 million years ago. During this collision, that limestone was subjected to high amounts of pressure and heat for a long time, turning it into a metamorphic rock, marble. Marble is composed primarily of calcium carbonate, aka calcite, but it can contain other minerals in it like tremolite, pyrite, quartz, micas. This one is called a dolomitic marble, meaning it has a higher concentration of magnesium in it. The minerals present in different marble formations depend on other stuff that may have been mixed in with the shells and bones, such as clay. So I'm on the rail trail right now, currently biking on the Stockbridge marble, and we're about to see an outcrop of it. I'm so out of breath. <laughs> sitting at the bottom of an ocean. The continental shelf, so think of like the coast of the east coast or uh, like off of Connecticut, New York, the shallower part of the ocean before it turns into like deep deep ocean. That's what this, that's what all this was 500 million years ago. And now it's rock at the surface where I'm standing. 
The quarry you see here was in operation from 1810 to 1947, mainly for use as building stone. This was because the quality of the stone, with its coarse grain and mostly beautiful white color, was highly sought after in the area compared to the lesser quality marbles in the region. There are many places in the area where you can see marble used in buildings. I went around and I looked at some places in Sheffield and Great Barrington, but these are just a few. But it wasn't just locally that the stone was used. There's even a sliver of the Washington Monument that's made of Stockbridge marble. The construction started out in 1848, but was halted in 1854 because of the Civil War beginning. It wasn't until 25 years later in 1876 that construction resumed with a new contract with the quarry in Sheffield, Massachusetts. However, there were some issues with this quarry and after a short time the contract was broken and the rest of the monument was built using stone from a quarry near the first one in Maryland. This is why the Washington Monument is two colors. You can't really tell that the middle sliver is different from the other two, but the bottom and top half are noticeably different. Even though they are both marble, they came from slightly different locations and therefore they weather differently over time when exposed to air and water. The funny thing is they didn't look different at all when the construction was first finished, but changed color over time. The Stockbridge Marble isn't the only marble formation in the Northeast that was used widely in construction during the 1800s and 1900s. There were several well-known formations like the Inwood Marble in New York City, Danby Marble in Vermont, and more. Danby Marble is still quarried today in the biggest underground marble quarry in the world. The famous stone is used from everything from kitchen countertops to interior design to facades of buildings and sculptures. These are all different marble formations with their own characteristics, but they all formed around the same time as the seafloor off the coast of ancient North America. After a while, more building materials became widely available like concrete and steel, and the use of building stone in general began to die down, but especially marble. You may notice that new construction of buildings that use stone today don't normally use such a soft rock like marble. It's usually granite or another stronger, more resistant rock. Remember when I mentioned how easily the water carved into the bedrock? This is a major reason why it doesn't work so great as a building stone over a long time. You may notice that it doesn't look like the typical very nice white marble, like you see some white over there, but um, that's because it's weathered on the surface here. And that's kind of an issue a lot of the time when, it, when marble is used as building stone because it weathers into this kind of ugly, dark color and it takes a lot of work to restore it and make it look nice and pretty again. You've probably also noticed it on cemetery, in cemeteries on gravestones. Um, older marble gravestones will usually be made of marble and they kind of weather into this, into this like kind of ugly color and that's why they're not really used as much anymore as well as the fact that they kind of like break down and break apart easily. Um, on the back side here there's some more white-ish parts you can kind of see on the underside. Um, this looks like it just broke kind of recently so it's kind of like the sparkly marble white look there compared to the weathered surface next to it. And that is the story of how tons of little sea organisms that fell to the bottom of a now long gone tropical sea became part of buildings that surround us today. This is yet another example of how we are constantly surrounded by evidence of our Earth's vast history, walking by it every day without even realizing the millions of years of history that we're walking right past. I hope this makes you think and wonder about what other stories could be hidden in plain sight, and that after watching this, you can never look at a stone structure the same way again, in the best way possible. Thanks for watching.